have to get out of here. Cooper here. That was quite a hair breath escape. I think it's fair to say the girl is on Derringer's radar now. To reach the surface, she'll need to use the service elevator. To use the service elevator, she'll need a key card. I suggest she borrow one from one of the clueless desk jockeys downstairs. Setting a destination marker for the media offices. Good luck. Badges. We don't need no stinking badges. Oh wait, this is metamorphosis. You need clearance just to use the bathroom. Never mind. used a blue key card to board that service elevator. was running low. That 
pepper spray here. This spot looks good. The arc suits are effective in protecting their wearer against taser strikes, but their Achilles heel is their lack of face protection, which makes them vulnerable to pepper spray. Remember to silence a body scanner before sending the girl through. A simple way to avoid seeing the inside of a confinement cell. Unless that's your thing. They can't see me here. Everything looks good. from us. almost alive. This must be what the Headmaster's protecting us from. Whatever it is. The Morning Bell newspaper. No more toothless headlines about board meetings and strategy seminars. Find me something that won't put our readers to sleep. Go on, get out there. A good story doesn't just waltz through the office door and into the headlines. Now, I have a tough obit to write tonight, so if you'll excuse me, I'm going to crawl inside a bottle for a few hours. Fellow citizens, 
It is morning in metamorphosis. Bells are sounding, awakening us to a new dawn, a new era. For this reason, we must approach the day with fresh blood, bold thinking, and a return to the unbridled optimism for which we are now famous the world over. Our nation's paper of record, the evening standard, served us well in our early years. But lately it cries out for recalibration, rebranding. We have decided on a new name. And with that new name comes a new face. I think you'll agree there is nothing standard about the woman standing next to me. And so without further ado, please welcome our new editor-in-chief of the Morning Bell, the exquisite Matilda Sade. Thank you, Headmaster. And please, call me Batty. Hello, Morning Bell staff. This is Quinn Derringer. Security Mandate 714 requires the installation of a confinement room in your offices. The Prisrag need to expand their footprint in Terminus prior to the arrival. Pardon our progress this week as we take a few measurements and knock down a few walls. Please consider this a friendly merger and not a hostile takeover. Look, Weep says this is where they pre- The headmaster's lies. Do you think we'll find a key card around here? Sega bomb. Terrorists almost certainly planted explosives inside Metamorphosis. That's a bloody good headline. Too bad we'll never use it. If you tell someone there's a monster under their bed, they'll check for it every night before they fall asleep. But if you tell someone there's a bomb in their wall, they'll rip the whole house apart looking for it. We're not in the business of printing the truth. We're in the business of suppressing a national panic attack. Take these printed copies up to the librarian. Let him line the bottom of his birdcage with them. can recharge here. My pockets are full. Burning pepper spray.
certain Prizrak in this area of the facility arm themselves with gas grenades. The effect will knock its targets unconscious. Sweet dreams. Taser in hand. I'm pursuing Help. the subject. Yours is mine. Sega's death video has disappeared. This coming from my source in the Prisrak. More likely, they just didn't care for the ending, so they're doing reshoots. As you know, in this day and age, nothing's ever truly gone. Track down the unedited version. I would love to compare it to Hair Director's Cut. We found 
found a cassette. Heading to the vent. Oh, the screwdriver broke. subject near to Xavier's heart. He wrote about this very issue in the Poison Manifesto. As with everything, Xavier saw it as a government cover-up in need of undressing. Xavier kept lists like this one, to determine where citizens in Metamorphosis stood in case a revolution broke out. I guess I should be relieved he put me on the good side. That would be Derringer's personal office chair. When it went missing, Derringer immediately blamed me. I guess we can close the book on that mystery now. However, the mystery of how Xavier got it through the vent remains unsolved. Somehow, I'm still alive. It's missing. And someone's been in here. I swear. It. I know. I know. I know what you're probably thinking. And yeah, I am paranoid. But you'd be paranoid too if everyone was always out to get you. I swear. I swear I put these pictures away before I left. I was scattered everywhere. secret from the overseer is hard enough. Keeping a secret room, well, that's nearly impossible. I'm gonna have to burn this spot and move on now. <sighs> Still, this is a life, right? Show me a re Revolutionary who isn't living in their own and I'll show you a revolution destined to fail Because when that fateful day arrives and technology betrays us, I'll be well suited for survival I'll Set up shop string some tin cans together, and I'll start spreading that gospel But for right now I can't settle down I can't I gotta stay hungry I gotta stay lean Living in shadows and necessity in my line of work you know what it's like? I'm like that rat scratching around behind your walls. Until one day, you don't hear him anymore. And you sit there and you hope he went silent because he's dead. But in your heart of hearts, you know that rat ain't dead. He's off somewhere. Making more rats. I have a treat for you today, kids. Today, I have got a book review for you. No, it's not the manifesto. It's one of the overseer's earlier efforts. It's a little self-help manual from the late 90s with this rather dubious title. Now, here it is. Defrag your mind. The pursuit of happiness in a computer age. 
This could be the biggest waste of printed pages ever to burden a bookshelf. I mean, this <laughs> makes Mein Kampf look like Anne of Green <laughs> Gables. Now, on page one, he states, and I'm quoting here, Disorganization is the single greatest threat to the continued existence of modern society. So, not genocide, not nuclear proliferation, not government oppression, not Wall Street. Clutter! <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I wish you could see this. This has got to be the ugliest dust jacket photo I've ever seen. Awful tie, worst haircut, nice sweater, jerk. This book starts by reminding us that we're all essentially supercomputers with an emphasis on the word super. It's cute. Next, he explains how we can simplify our lives, be even happier, by cleansing our minds of thoughts that are... are uh, hold on. Impure on the level of psychological honesty and... Impure on the level of psychological honesty and filled with resentment and spiritual shallowness. Blah, 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 -de blah. Basically, this book is all about the whitewashing of the ugly truth and recasting it as beautiful lies. He thinks clutter's the problem. Well, I'd hate for him to see this place. Although, on second thought, Maybe I should invite him over sometime for a little glasnost. Blow his mind. Literally. <sighs> All right. I gotta go. This is Zager reminding you, don't trust anybody. Zager here. Today, all Prisrak were required to report to the reading room for a mandatory audience with the overseer. Wait, I'm sorry, that, correction. The few and the proud were pleasantly surprised to find themselves graced by a visit from the big cheese himself. <laughs> his majesty treated our hometown heroes to a few select passages from his manifesto. And after all the applause, he even sat down to sign a few copies. So about this time, I'm off, I'm wandering the halls, doing a bit of reconnaissance, when some FOB Prisrak found me and dragged me along. As luck would have it, I had a manifesto with me. But it wasn't any old manifesto. It was mine. The edited version, where the pages are filled with righteous invective and disciplined truth. Like I've said before, my manifesto is the old man's death warrant. A summons for all the evil he's wrought into this place and beyond. Well, at least it will be once I can crank out enough copies. I'm <laughs> kind of running a one-man opera here. Uh, <coughs> or was I? Oh, yeah. So, all of a sudden, here I am, being hustled up to the podium to meet the man himself. And before I can hide the book, he snatches it out of my hands, opens it up to the first page. Behind the mask, I'm white as a sheet. I'm waiting for him to look down and see my, you know, improvements. I froze. And he just smiles, that big plastic smile at me, and kisses me as John Hancock, under the words, best wishes. <laughs> so he hands it over. Off I go, and, well, here I am. I wonder if that smug Treglazov could appreciate the irony of signing his own death warrant. I know I do. I'm not afraid to die. No qualms about winding up on the wrong end of a gun. We all go someday. What scares me is what they do to me after I'm dead. 
Maybe they leave my body intact. Make an open casket martyr out of me. That ain't likely. See, I think the chances are that they're going to cremate me. And burn me like a stack of banned books. And then they'll take the propaganda machine out for a victory lap and scatter my ashes like so much confetti in a ticker tape parade. Because who doesn't love a parade, right? Who doesn't love a parade? Well, I don't. Listen, kids, I don't know what Treglazov has in store for you, but whatever he gives you going forward is too little, too late. He's already taken the best of you. He's taken your identity. That's what this place does. It's what men like the overseer do. They remove your right to privacy and they leave you afraid to speak your mind. Pretty soon. There's no mind left to speak from. And without a point of view, you've got nothing. And you might as well be dead. Well, I'm still alive. And while there's still fire in my heart and a dangerous amount of wild turkey in my veins, I'm going to prepare for my own afterlife. I'm going to write my own obit. I'm going to get out in front of the old man's propaganda machine, and I'm going to stand there like the tank man and unyielding, unmoving. Too often, history is written by bad men. But not my history. Not my history. Not tonight. Tonight, I tell my own story. Even if it kills me. Zager here. Now, to all of you budding revolutionaries, I wanted to give a word of advice. The best way to fight fire is with more fire. Why do protests fail? Well, protests fail because the protesters bring knives to a gunfight. Nobody listens to a knife. If you want to get the Prizrak's attention, you need to learn to speak their language. Charged taser or a full canister of P0 says plenty more than the verse chorus verse of Kumbaya. I mean, what are you gonna do? Kill them with kindness? Good luck. A revolt should be revolting. Violence is the only language these men speak, and brutality is their only currency. So pay them back with the business end of a taser. Well, they'll feel it in the morning. Believe me, I know. I have been tased and pepper sprayed more times than I care to remember. I, I was at a WTO protest once. I got hit in the eyes with so much capsaicin, it melted my contacts. It hurts. And that's the point. Because it hurts them too. Listen, the uprising begins the moment you are willing to fight fire with fire. This is what you have to do. Destiny's online too, so pick up the phone already. This is Sager telling you not to say peace, because peace is for chumps. You can always find a crime. That's their motto. That's their mantra. They tattoo it to the inside of their eyelids always find a crime, and it's true. You can find almost anything if you look hard enough. But you know, the one thing you'll never find, no matter how long you search for it, is the end of a good conspiracy. Just when you think you've caught the beast by the tail, you round a corner and discover it just keeps going. It's never ending. It's all tail. And while you're gunning further and further down the rabbit hole, they're watching you. 
They're waiting for you to slip up, forget to rewind, run a red light, or play your T-Rex bootleg too loud after 10 p.m., which you only did because your ex-wife won't shut up about you not having a square job like all her friends' husbands with their starch white collars and their paisley ties. Carol! But my point is this. You think you're onto them. But they're onto you. You try to track them, follow them, find out their dirty little business. And that's just an open invitation for them to find out yours. <laughs> so what am I saying? What? What am I saying? Am I saying you shouldn't pay attention? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, be smart. When you tail a suspect, you don't follow too close. If the winds change, they smell you coming up behind them. I'm telling you, you got to be smart if you want to unravel a good conspiracy. So rule number one, don't ask questions, at least not out loud or to anyone that's alive. Rule number two, pretend you don't give a You see them dump a body in the marsh, act like it's no big thing. And rule number three, rule number three, rules one and two. If you don't ask questions, you'll never learn the truth. And if you look the other way when bad happens, then just get away with it best thing you can do is to make a scene. Make a mess of things. Look like a screw-up. Once they've written you off as a joke, go be smart. You can't break a few eggs without making an omelet. Just don't let them know you learned how to cook. This is Zager. And I'm telling you, don't trust anyone. Zager here. Gonna try a different format tonight. We're gonna... Hey! Hey! Sit. No, no. Just sit there. It's fine. It's all gonna be fine. All right, we're gonna switch things up a bit, and uh, yours truly is gonna conduct an interview. <clears throat> you may know my first guest from such crimes against humanity as the recalibration of innocent children and the rape and murder of privacy. Ladies and gentlemen, Please give a big Zager Radio Hour welcome to one of the Ark Prisrak from Terminus Level 2! <laughs> what? I can't understand. What? Oh, right, yeah, sorry. Here. Yeah, sorry about that. It pulls off the skin somehow. Okay, so you're here, and you're here. It's a big show, so, uh, introduce yourself. What's your name? Come on, come on, say something. What's your name? your mother. This is a terrible thing. Your parents must have been horrible, horrible people. Okay. Just stop. Stop. It's okay. Hey. Hey. It's okay. Dude, seriously. You're embarrassing me. Stop inching away from the mic. I can't hear you when you do that. Okay. My first question for you, sir. Who are the pre -cals? Huh? Are they clones? Some kind of genetic experiment? Trey Glazov's illegitimate kids? I, what? I don't know. I don't, I don't have any association with the pre <laughs> ah, No association, huh? That's funny because I caught you red-handed beating up a little boy, and yet you're saying no association. That boy. Yeah, yeah, nine! Three, three W. He stole a uniform. He was armed! He was 95 pounds! He's a scared kid. <sighs> You want to tell me why Derringer and the lot of you are so worried about one of the pre-cals jumping off this little merry-go-round? It's for the protection. <laughs> right? How's that exactly? Huh? <sighs> this is not going well at all. Do you want some coffee? <laughs> Stop it! Then answer my question! <laughs> this... This is how an interview works. You've got to say things, dummy. Look. I... Did you piss your pants? Oh, my God, you did. Okay, well, I guess I won't be borrowing your uniform after all. Please, please just stop. Okay, okay. Please. Hang on, just... Okay. Well, I think that's about all the time we have for today. Next week, we'll do a call-in show. So, Zager out. Dude, so unprofessional.
Last word of it. This isn't how I thought I'd spend the eve of the arrival. Oh, Senor Octavo. I am so sorry. I must come to terms with the fact that I'm at least partially responsible for your death. And now I sit here, adding insult to injury writing more lies on the wall of your coffin. I'm done. I've ruined enough lives. I refuse to taint their afterlives too. Hi, you've reached Matty Said at the morning bell. Please leave a message. Hello? Your stupid machine is on. No, no, I'm stopping it. Hold on. There we go. Murray, how are you, darling? You lot, some Ah, not well, I guess. I just spent the last hour getting slapped down by the headmaster because you thought it would be cute to create some pointless controversy around my drinking habits. You stupid, phony, phony! Well, if that isn't richer than the royal family, you're the phony, me, Ray. You with your bogus name and manufactured accent. I am curious. How exactly did you manage to cultivate such a lovely and exotic French patois growing up in Blacksburg, Virginia? Hmm? Miss Prido? Should I call you Miss Said. If you want me to drop the issue, then you'd better drop the act. Ask me why I haven't shared that with the headmaster. What's the matter, darling? Cat got your tongue. Have I made a compelling argument for metamorphosis? You've been most illuminating. And you've been a delight. Thank you for entertaining this nostalgic old fool for an evening, Miss Say. Please, call me Matty. And the only fool I see is the shaky-handed barman over there who went stingy on my gym. Time for one more. I think another time. After this flight, I have two more, and then another lengthy voyage beyond that. I trust we'll meet again. Perchance in metamorphosis. Good evening. Wait. You forgot this, this pendant thingy. You keep it. Sending me secret messages. Dear Miss Said, let's not pretend the countdown to this day didn't begin the moment we hired you. As a seasoned newsman, I am disgusted to claim you as a colleague. You lack even a modicum of basic journalistic integrity and... and your investigative methods are grotesque and unethical. Ah. Oh. Blah, 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 blah. I have ignored your poorly researched writing for too long. But your article about Treglazov was a new low, even for you. That would... That you would bend truth so plainly in order to defend a man such as him and to do so without even the slightest regard for the reputation of this August newspaper is beyond the pale. Consider this letter your formal termination.
Leaving so soon? You'll need more than that to get out of here. It's all right. They won't come in here. Apparently, they're afraid of me. Oh, what I'll write about them. Would you like a drink? Or would it corrupt your coding? You're a long way from home. I don't have a home. Do you have a soul? Do Greek cows have souls? I used to. Until one night, I went to bed with the devil. I woke up regretting it. But I did it again the next night, and the night after that, and every morning I'd look at what I'd written and issue an apology. But that wore me out. Sincerity is exhausting. So I started faking it. As a woman, you learn to fake an apology. As a woman journalist, that's all you end up doing. So what's your story? I'm escaping. Mm. Good luck with that. Do I have a chance? Stupider people than you have gotten further in life with less help. You do have help, right? No. I see. Well, I thought I heard you talking to someone earlier. So what's your plan for getting to the surface? Because there's a pair of armoured Prizrak upstairs who like their jobs too much to let some empty-headed twit with a stolen mobile get the better of them. No offence. None taken. Well, I know a way to remove them. No blood, no violence. You won't have to get your hands dirty. You know what a news office calls their archives? They call it the morgue. The place where old news goes to die. But sometimes we'll bring a story back to life. Sometimes we'll raise the dead. Are you willing to summon a ghost or two? Yes. Then let's see which poor souls we're dealing with tonight. Edwin Chung and David Bowen. There are two data hubs on either side of Terminus, Atlantic and Pacific. Getting to them won't be easy, but you'll manage. Go, now. I don't understand. What do we do when we get to them? We? Me. Right. Find the Pacific and Atlantic servers. I'll call you when you get there. This key card, compliments of Maddie Said, operates the service elevator going to the surface. Maybe she just forgot I had it. Well then, it would seem Miss Sayd is stewing in a broth of remorse and hard alcohol tonight. However, she does have a solid plan for dispatching those two Prizrak at the service elevator. I'd advise you and the girl to follow Maddie's lead on this. Drive safely. See me here. Equipping taser. No use 
society. Hmm. Unhand me. Going in for the steel. of you. My name is Matty, and I'll be your tour guide tonight. Are you back at the terminus yet? Go ahead and choose one of the two server wings, Atlantic or Pacific. We'll reconvene when you get there. You're on the right track. Work your way through there to the server room and mind the Prisrac. Drawn an oath to protect the terminus. Even though they haven't explained what it is. Why is it so cold? I don't have room for anything else. Prisrac. Let go! Cut me. I think he's had enough. Let's go for the steel. Got it. Let's see what he's got. Too far away. That's more than I can carry. Red level is back to normal.
a taser. We'll check his pockets. All's quiet here. some peppers. Here goes another good screwdriver. here. Is this what we're looking for? Good, you're there. That preapic metaphor you see in front of you is the Pacific server. Have your friend access it. Metamorphosis is so gloomy this time of year. Let's get out and explore the world, shall we? I wonder what the weather's like in Edwin Chung's hometown of Shenzhen, China. Select that location on the map.
，我来清理法。出去吧，出去走走。ID one，ID one， 停一下，听我说，把笔放下来，只要只要一秒钟。抱歉，没事。我不知道我应该要怎么做，我有点晕了。会这样的，我感觉地球引力拉不住我。轻飘飘的，可以飘出地球的感觉。我该怎么做点什么呀？要不然就要飘走了。You're off to a good start. Keep searching. 总算安静了。我喜欢这样。我希望能更安静一点。你不是那个意思。你我以前哭一整夜，哭得烦死了。你不是那个意思。哪有宝宝不哭的？电影不会像这样。我们也不知道是什么原因，可能是噩梦作者，弄得被什么吓到了，吓到我老婆。她以前特别担心，不过我。就是讨厌他，你还在镜下中，那我半辈子都在镜下中。那我不知道，我喜欢现在的安静。不过这个城市还不够安静，我想去别的地方。那你或许应该去吧，你或许连这个国家也不够安静，不像我们小时候那样。我比较喜欢以前这个国家。不像现在，对人大喊大叫的。你就去让你快乐的地方吧，试上几个月。离开这个讨厌的国家以后，我再也不会回来了。艾迪温，嘘，拜托你小声点。Well done. What else? 这些是什么？他们寄给我一个礼物。谁？就是他们。玩推荐的人。这有本书。共和国。他们给你寄了不少文件来。你都读了吗？读了一部分。这儿还有些医疗表格，你还没有填完呢。他们填好了已经够多了。艾迪文，我没有在开玩笑。这些人做事非常仔细的。甚至仔细的过分了，你看看这个，他们要你列出婴儿时期感染的每一种传染病，里面说你不这样做的话就是犯法。然后呢，这个表你填的不对，认真一点。艾迪文，你不了解这些人，你说话就像我妈。肺结核你怎么说？我三十四岁，得的是前腹飞进核，这病不会传染的。那么非典型性肺炎呢？你有症状。你有一次病得很重，我不会告诉这些害怕性剧人我得过飞剑，谁会在意啊？那都是好几年前的事了。我现在好了，我不用每打个喷嚏或者喷着脚趾头要让这些人知道
，小子，你别那么夸张。艾迪文，是我，我到了你这儿了。东西看起来挺不错的，只是金钱树快树了。抱歉。我想我浇的水太多了，老兄，你在哪儿啊？怎么老是收到你的留言？我偷玩了你一些电子游戏，我最想玩的那个找不着，你知道哪个吗？我真不敢相信你玩偷变这么暴力的游戏，你看到那些禁玩项目的清单了？我真想和你知道怎么把它偷过来的。不说了。我希望你找到你要的东西，然后快点回家。我今天可能一天都待在家里，空气质量指数又超过一百七十五了，街上大家又都戴上口罩了。Perfect. You've dug up enough dirt. Let's add some water and make mud. If mud slinging is an art form, then this is our canvas. We're here to build a case against the Prizrak Edwin Chung. The full story, replete with scandalous quotes and damning photos. Select some audio or an image to get started. A picture's worth a thousand words. Choose the one you think will inflict the most damage and move it onto the template. Good, we have an image. Can we find a quote to match? Pick a sound bite and move it onto the template. Did you like this hateful country? I won't be back. I can't believe you play this kind of stupid game. What are you doing? What are you doing? I won't tell these fearful people that I flew a plane. Sam, it's controversial. What are you doing? The quote doesn't ring true in the context of that photo. Try changing it up. Let's clean the slate and do this again. Good. We have an image. Did you like this hateful country? Smashing. Now that's a headline you can set your watch to. Care to publish it? Would you care to be credited for this scoop? No worries. I'll publish this as my own piece. Ungrateful Prizrak Edwin Chung damns nation that welcomed him. What a bloody ingrate. Between you and me, I don't feel comfortable with this. Those poor people. Don't be such a pill. We just take what we need and ignore the tales of hardship. At least I do. If you get off on every sordid detail, well, that's your problem. Now, we've got one more server to go. Let's get to the other side of Terminus. The Overseer is a glutton for raw data. He's already cleaned his own plate. Now he's eating off yours, mine, and everyone you've ever known. Indefinite radical adjustment to unenamored declination 7, 4, 3.
We should stay closer to each other. Another good screwdriver. You can open this, can't you? That's more than I can carry. I see water down there. It occurs to me I don't know how to swim. There are challenges that improve ability and those that merely prove a person inadequate for the task at hand. By leagues, Ulysses fits the latter category so well it damn near creates it. It's nonsense, without order. Joyce leaves postmodernism unmuzzled, worse than doggerel. To what end should we let our citizens waste the state's energy on this practice? They squander their imagination decoding nonsense while their work ethic grows brittle and raw. Bad government fosters juvenile delinquency and a clockwork orange pays tribute to it. Little Alex must learn on his own not to beat his elders with a cane. But good government has no patience for individual moral improvement, particularly now that Alex can hide behind the moniker Anonymous. The last thing we need are children free to cavort without oversight. The Republic carves up anonymity to sculp the moral soul. Zamiatan's We is a near sibling to Pasternak's Zhivago both truants of the Russian Revolution of 1917, both landmines in the hands of children. Zamyatin takes his imagination in the direction of the dystopian state, the bugbear of artists who irrationally fear the cradling hand of sound government. His nightmare state keeps everyone in glass houses for better surveillance. Librarian, the people don't want privacy. They just don't want to see you watching them. Aptly described as a top-down them up hotline puts you in the shoes of a coked-up hitman willing to do anything to anybody. I'm not a fan of video game violence, but I can't help but appreciate its manic beauty. After playing a session, it's hard to shake the strange feeling it leaves me with. I don't like it, but I keep coming back for more. I will let you in on a little secret. When the internet was abuzz with praise for FDL, I was only part of that chorus because I wanted to be cool. Normally I would be all over what is essentially Oregon Trail set in space, but I just couldn't wrap my head around its complex systems. Then one day, 
the game clicked for me as I successfully led my crew to the far corners of the galaxy. From there, I set my forum posting speed to faster than light, ensuring everybody knew I was a fan since day one. Super Time Force Ultra is an indie tour de force packed with the following essential ingredients. Retro pixel art, face melting 2D action, time travel, hilarious writing, and a rat skateboarding dinosaur. If you are someone who thinks there's a serious lack of hip, innovative games out there, Dr. Cooper has just the remedy, STFU. When game designers sit down and think about what sort of game they should design for mobile, I bet many dream of something similar to 10 million, a bite-sized dungeon crawler with RPG mechanics and an addictive 3 minute gameplay loop. Credit goes to designer Luca Redwood for actually realizing his vision and building the quintessential mobile dungeon crawler. Most of us just stop at the dreaming part. Truth bomb number one. I was a little skeptical that the super indie team at Supergiant could buck the sophomore slump following Bastion. Truth bomb number two. When I first sat down to play Transistor, I was confused as to why this wasn't just another action RPG beat em up. Truth bomb number three, after a few minutes of getting used to its inventive combat mechanic, I was in love. You know what the problem is with the stealth genre? They're often just a vehicle for some crazies to tell their lame story. Not Monaco. This is pure stealth, and even supports multiplayer. As a professional hobbyist game designer, I know enough to stay away from something this difficult to develop, Yet designer Andy Schatz totally nailed the landing. Bravo. Before I played Mark of the Ninja, I didn't think designing a satisfying 2D stealth game was possible, but leave it to these talented Canucks to prove me wrong. The game controls silky smooth, and its light dark mechanic is brilliant. If only I was as sneaky as this ninja, I'd have my stolen game cartridges back before Derringer was the wiser. Gemini Ru has a sorrowful beauty to it. Built single-handedly, this sci-fi noir feels like both a love letter to early CD-ROM era adventure games and a lament on why these types of games aren't made anymore. What Gemini Ru lacks in high-end production, it makes up for in clever storytelling. Its multi-layered narrative was clearly a labor of love, and a journey to the past worth taking. See what he's carrying. Cell fiber auction commencing in three minutes. Nice. Make preparations for the alabaster.
found some pepper spray. Equipping P0. Good idea. We can read charge here. for the steel. Got it. Mark three. Kiliastic. spray. See what he's carrying. Going in to pick his pockets. What's that? I'm following the subject.
Huh? Let go of me! <laughs> I've captured the girl. Last initial. R. was running low. I should be safe here. Lost sight of the subject. I captured the girl. I've apprehended the girl. Equipping pieces. Let me go! I've captured the subject. Some Omniview ability, and will not work, you will probably find, you may also reach or inside conf- Captive is secure. The girl must feel a strong sense of deja vu. Each confinement room contains a power. Find the unit. It is an addition. Equipping P0. This spot looks good. They won't find me in here.
level is back to normal. See what he's carrying. NPR. Got it. Oh, it's Blanche. Everything looks good. Arming pepper spray. We're here. Splendid. Access the server as before and we'll get started. Track David Bowen hails from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Select that access point on the map. Yep, that's it. Can I help? Uh-uh. No, sir. This is your last home-cooked meal for a while, and you're gonna sit right there and not lift a finger. <sighs> that I can do. I hope they feed you decently. Can't have you wasting away on me. I'm sure they'll feed us. Are you worried about me? Always. This is a great opportunity, Les. If it's so great, why didn't Mitchell sign up, too? Beth's family is loaded. Mitch doesn't have to take every job comes his way. I'm gonna miss you. I'm making buttermilk pie. Do you hear what I just said? Yeah, I heard you. That reminds me. When you get to where you're going, check your gray carry-on. I left you a surprise. Did you now? Well, I should warn you. This place I'm going, they have strict rules about contraband. Especially contraband of a pornographic nature. Relax. They're... Tasteful. <laughs> then I should have no problem smuggling them in. Nice. That could be useful. What else can you find? Where are you? Once again, I find myself sitting here, alone, talking to a computer with no one on the other side. David, I don't know what to do. I spent $14 on this microphone so that we could talk. I don't know where you are. I haven't heard from you in weeks. You said you would be able to call every day. June is having a really rough time at school. And Libby has impetigo. And Dr. Carter says we could get it. If you have a doctor there, please go see him. I don't want you to get anyone else sick. You could be really contagious, and it's worse if you get it as an adult. Brilliant. 
Keep searching, you two. Hello? Mitchell? Hey, it's... Leslie. Leslie, yeah. What's up? <laughs> sorry, I... Hey, don't be sorry. What's going on, darling? Um... We're in a lot of trouble. What kind of trouble? I don't know how we're going to be able to buy groceries for the week. David isn't responding to my calls. It's like he dropped off the face of the earth. The check he was supposed to send last Thursday didn't arrive, and now I don't... I don't... Hey, hey, it's, it's all right. We'll figure something out. Anything I can do to repay you. We'll figure something out. Thank you. You've always been such a good friend to David. And me. I'll tell you what. Why don't you, uh, why don't you come over to the house tonight and we'll, uh, make this all okay. Oh, I, I thought Beth said you were out of town. Oh, well, yeah, Beth's going to her sister's for the weekend, but, uh, hey, I'll be here. What'd you like for dinner tonight? I'll pick us up something, and I'll get us a bottle. You still drinking Irish gold? Oh, I don't, I mean, I shouldn't. I have to be up early tomorrow. No, 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 no. You, you come over and uh, and relax and and have a drink with me. We'll make this okay. Don't you worry, darling. We'll figure this all out. You got a nose for this. What else can we grab? Oh, hey, Mitchell. See your truck outside. David, your uh, your wife picked me up on the way home from the supermarket. I hope you don't mind. I, I took your last beer. <laughs> no, nah, that's all right. Hey, what you got there? Popping pills? <laughs> oh, right. No. No, Libby's sick. Some kind of infection. Uh, uh, that's a shame. Yeah, she's fine. These things ain't cheap, though. And I find out today they aren't covered by our plan. Pretty much the perfect cap to it. I don't know if Leslie told you, but we're pretty upside down on the mortgage. Got enough late notices we could wallpaper the living room with them. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Anything I can do? Nah. You've bailed us out enough times. Can't ask you again. There's just no work right now. Oh, man. We're close. Let's find just a bit more. Mom? June? Uh, did we forget how to knock? Sorry. Jeez. Shut the door. Now, let's try that again. Mom, may I please come in? You may. What are you doing? Helping your father pack a suitcase. What did you just stick in there? It's none of your business. Did you finish doing your homework? Yes. Mom, is Danny joining the cult? Of course not. But this boss guy, Triglazar, he sounds like he's running a cult. I'm sure it's not that bad. Do not talk about our fearless leader that way. <laughs> Seriously, Dad? Hey, listen to me, Junebug. I am not joining a cult. I admit this seems a little weird, but this is a great opportunity for our family. There's a lot of money in this job. It's private security. This is no different than when I went to work at JL National. You remember? That was in Akron, Ohio. This is like halfway around the world. Yeah, it's a little bit further, but we need the money. Don't worry. I don't care one bit about this guy's belief system, and neither should you. If this Treglazov turns out to be as crazy as he looks, I'll just leave. I'll turn around and come right home. I promise. We should have enough to make this Prizrak disappear. Let's conjure a little journalistic magic.
love the photo. Choose a sound bite with some real bite. I don't care one bit about this guy's belief system. Not strong enough. The quote and the image are incompatible, I'm afraid. We have the photo. I don't care one bit. That's worthy of a Pulitzer right there. Let's send this story to print. Would you care to be credited for this scoop? No worries. I'll publish this as my own piece. That wasn't any easier the second time around. Every ugly detail. I feel... I feel sick to my stomach. Oh, your after-the-fact moral piety is tiresome. If you know a better way to kill a man without firing a shot, I'd love to hear it. Zero at the ready. Taser in hand. Philistine in the warmth of a burning kitchen. Oh no. <coughs> I've captured the girl. Going in for the steel. Nine scattered left. Got it. Clear. Done. Both of you. Head to the door marked Control. I'm just putting the finishing touches on our first article now. Should have it up over the wire shortly. Oh, it's locked. Battery was running low.
these nasty little minds, affectionately called sleepyheads, can really interrupt a Prizrak's patrol path. Something for the girl to keep in mind. I mean mind. Equip this sleep mine like any weapon in the girl's inventory. Press the set button to place it where she's standing. When a Prizrak walks over it, it's lights out for the night. Hmm. I'll hold on to this. See what he's carrying. Check in. Dear Headmaster, by the time you read this, I will have escaped. My mind is set on it. This place of yours is pure mathematical evil. You think that we're all ones and zeros, but we're not. And more of us every day are beginning to see through your lies about the outside. Once, you had me. I believed in you, in metamorphosis. When I was a child, I dreamed of joining the Prizrak. You should have let me. Now, it's too late. If you see 390H, tell her she has my heart. I'm coming back for it someday. Sincerely, 933W. Mixtape. No, sir. It's a Zegger cassette. He addresses the precals. What do you mean? The rant. Zegger, on the tape. He addresses Weep personally. Who the hell is Weep? I, I mean the 933W. Do you want to listen to it? It might be useful. Personally, I'd rather listen to Murray talk than hear whatever's on that tape. Yes, sir. Just bag it up. didn't need any encouragement. He had it in his mind to escape this place, long before Zager first talked about revolution. Who is it? Who is it? Hope? Hello? Is anyone there? this this is this is not a manifesto the propaganda machine is a well-oiled piece of hardware dissection rooms what are you doing reading his manifesto <laughs> lights out
You and the girl have reached a part of the facility even I have never seen before. I've heard only whispered rumors and half-truths about what goes on up there. I even... Hang on. I'm being called away from my desk. I hope to return shortly. Be careful out there. Cooper out. I'll hold on to this. Citizens of Metamorphosis, this is Matty Said with the Morning Bell Online Edition. Tonight's breaking news concerns one of our most elite Prisrak, a man entrusted to stand watch over us, to protect us at all costs. But now, this Prisrak, Edwin Chung, is charged with criticism of our dear overseer, a most grave offence. We at the Morning Bell Online Edition will continue our up-to-the-minute coverage as we learn more. Thank you, and watch your step. We might have a security breach. Someone just accessed both the Atlantic and Pacific server rooms. Okay, well, we'll just trace it. I did. It was Maddie Sage's car. Morning bell. Okay, she's allowed. Yeah, but why tonight? Eve of the arrival. Doesn't that seem weird to you? Well, after what he's preaching in there, I don't think anything's weird anymore. <laughs> You're not helping me. Here, have another cup. I'm gonna be up all night. We all will. Stay on it. Bird dog it. I'm, I'm sure it's nothing, though. Overseer? Sir, I have Vice Admiral Matthews on the non dial. Uh, the best one? Uh, the other? Yeah, the second one. Dragler's off. Vice Admiral. The magnet sticks to what it knows. Needle always gets to the point. Go ahead. <clears throat> Let better one zero six two zero overcoat two zero uh, three. Wakefield eight eight four seven overcoat. Wait three seconds. <clears throat> okay, go secure. Avalon one two seven or secure. This better be important. I have a fleet to attend to. Yes, about that, Richard. I believe you might have overdone it. What are you talking about? That shiny flotilla surrounding <laughs> Our satellite shows three battle cruisers, a frigate, a... How the hell are you seeing that? Who do you think I am? Listen to me, sir. Remove those ships. Makes my people uneasy. Which people are you referring to? Tomorrow at the arrival, we expect a modest welcome party, not an army. We're the Navy. Pennies or pounds, either way, I don't care for it. Now, if you'll excuse me, Admiral, I have rather important business to attend to. Hey, you called me. <laughs> no, he hung up on me. <laughs> Place is quiet. Tonight's list for your eyes only, sir. 
I see Mireille Prideau's name is absent. Sir, I have reason to believe the mentor has not been completely forthcoming with us. You think she's dangerous? I think she could harm the arrival, yes. In fact, I think those are her intentions. I always anticipated a certain degree of pushback, if not outright sedition, but not from her. This one stings at the heart. Oh, I hate this music. My goodness, it's really coming down, isn't it? There's a storm moving in from the northeast. We're tracking it. I hope it doesn't upend the arrival. I hope it's not one and the same. Very good. We spotted 390 ACA tree on the second floor. Watch the steps. Roger that. Problem? No problem. Just business as usual. But I'm afraid I'll have to catch up with you later. I see. Watch your step tonight. You too, sir. Gentlemen, this is Quinn Derringer, Chief of PRISRAC. You may notice some of my men sweeping the operations center prior to the arrival. Now they know not to touch anything valuable, but let them do their work and give those rooms a clean bill of health before our overseer gets up there later tonight for his briefing. No sign of the freak out. <coughs> P zero at the ready. Ah! He almost got me. I'll check his pockets. I got some. I wonder what he's carrying. What were they working on in there? Station 16, this is Madame Prideau. Close the investigation on Precal 390H. I've chosen not to recalibrate her at this time. Uh, negative, Madame. I can't let you authorize that. What? You've been downgraded to reliability status pending review. <laughs> Absurd. Maybe, but you can't make changes to a precal status until someone reinstates your security clearance. This is Marie Prideau, and I am giving you a direct order. Close the file on the girl, or I will come up there and do it myself. Well, that's just it. You can't get up here. Madame. Oh. <sighs> 
citizens of Metamorphosis. From where I sit, I behold a shimmering panorama upset only by the most magnificent island in the sun. Upon its silken shores lie opportunities to a happiness old world man could have never imagined. Adventures on a scale so grand they would stop the hearts of history's boldest dreamers. We are nearly there. But the wind has never been in our favor. And so we must power our own conveyance. The arrival is near, my friends. Now is not the time to draw in the oars. Now is the time to row mightily, to move swiftly until the top mast splinters overhead and the white capped violence of their filthy ocean bows in apology. Citizens, row for me tonight, and I promise you by dawn we will arrive. This was tonight, the last moment of calm before the chaos. The poison manifesto started appearing at our doorsteps only minutes later. Hello? Hello? Oh, how do you... How does this work? The book was not here an hour ago. I dissected every detail on the toll. Effect of recalibration. Nothing more. She's gonna break that mirror. Then it's her bad luck. Get in there before she cuts herself. And have Cooper replace the mirror. Matty Said with the Morning Bell Online Edition. The plot thickens, as now a second Prisrac, David Bowen, faces disturbing charges involving criticism of our overseer. Stay tuned for further updates.
something. Rizrak, checking in. leaked in kidnapping plot. Again, don't worry about how you're presented. We control the narrative. You just describe your experience to me. Okay, so... Like I was, uh... I, I thought I heard something suspicious outside the reading room. Suspicious how? Suspicious, like... I don't know, like, like it was talking. Like someone talking to themselves? Yeah, and, and I'd known from, from our briefings that Zager's crazy and he talks to himself a lot, so... So, so I thought, you know, maybe it could be him. I see. I'd like to ask you about something else. I, I know what you're going to ask me. There's a rumor. Absolutely not. Not even a little. It's a natural human reaction. Look, if anyone in that room pissed themselves, it was Zager when he saw it broken free. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. No, I'm done. This interview's over. still milling about down there. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I apologize for whatever I'm accused of. I'm sorry. Please, just that send me ain't home. apologizing. I don't it's even know what I did. You criticized the overseer. What about you? What do you have to say for yourself? Smart man. You could learn something from this man. They could be here all night. Huh. I have an idea. Queen, it's Matthew. Miss Say, to what do I owe this pleasure? Is this a bad time? Not at all. Just had to step out of the confessional box. Well, when you finish down there, come see me. I have some sins of my own I'd like to confess. Yeah, I'll, uh, give me a minute. What are we still doing here, huh? Come on, people. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Get these two delinquents down to process them. No. You stay here. Man this post. There's still a pre cal at large. We can't have it getting up to the garden. Dissection one. We'll surveil his private quarters. See if we can't find something incriminating in there. Going 
through there until that. more compelling than contraband or criticism. Bring the hammer down swiftly. Frame this Prisrak for tasing Mireille. After all, someone did it. Who's to say it wasn't him? Access the monitor. I'll log you in. Attention! At ease. Hello, young man. May I come in? Yes, sir. How are you finding your new surroundings? Very accommodating, sir. I see you have been outfitted with the Prisrak arsenal. Yes, sir. When dealing with cargo, as precious as the precals, it is important to maintain a gentle hand, hence these more encouraging instruments. Oh, this is a fine taser you have. Good deterrent to fits of rebellion. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? Yes, sir. Do not lose it. And never, ever turn it toward your superiors. Good find. You're old hat at this by now. Hey, Mom, it's me. I don't know what time it is where you are. Because I don't even know where I am. I'm calling you from the satellite phone Uncle Connor gave me. You were right. I should have listened to you. This whole thing, this place, I get it now. There's order in the universe, but at a cost I can't afford. I just want to leave. I just want to leave. Murray and Derringer each have an arm and they're pulling me in opposite directions. I had a dream where they actually did this and then fought each other with my torn off limbs. <laughs> I should shut up. I love you. I miss you. I miss the earth. I don't even consider this place to be part of it. Bye. That one could come in handy. What else? Hey man, you work in tonight? Nope. AM library. What's up? Uh, yeah, just come on in, why don't you? Can I borrow this? What, my D4 comic? Hell no, I'm reading it. You're not reading it right now. I'll trade you the sandwich. That's a horrible trade. And get that 
Out of my room, you spilling mustard swill on the floor. Fair enough. Hey, did you get that email from Downinger? What email? Check it out. <sighs> Derringer email. No, I don't see anything here. Right on. I guess he didn't CC you. Anyway, I'll get out of your hair. Later. Later. Oh, damn it. I took my comic. Keep digging. All of these must be taken down. Especially this one. <sighs> what a vulgar display. It's just a poster. It celebrates a behavior the Overseer resolutely prohibits. It's a liquor advertisement. Uh, Derringer lets me have it up. Derringer does not make the rules. He merely enforces them. Poorly, I may add. I'm keeping it. Do not test me. It's my identity. You have no identity! You have been misinformed. You have no personality we care to know. No name we care to speak. In time, you may earn these things. But for now, you remain a blank canvas, as do these walls. I really hate that woman. Fabulous. Let's get to work. We'll have you to the surface in no time. This one should go quickly, as you're now well versed in the language of character assassination. A Prusak attacked Mireille. Make me believe it was this one. Damn it, I took my comic. I really hate that woman. Mireille Prideau's attacker called Red Handed. Well, perhaps not Red Handed, but soon enough anyway.
Did you know? Did you know? I give up. I give up. I'm walking to you now. Are you there? Not quite. I'm going to need more time. We shouldn't be talking about a lot. I agree. But then I don't have my phone, do I? As if it wasn't enough to tase me, you had to give the precal my only means of communication. Technically, I didn't give it to them. Over. Technically, you're an Over. How would I know? I was unconscious. Stay off this channel. I'll see you at noon. Over and out. Watch your step. <laughs> 